Grey Rat the Thief was once a well-known name. Until I ended up rotting in a cell. <laughs> to Honored Madman. I hope everybody's doing well. We've got something Dark Soulsian for you guys today. It's, uh, I'd imagine long awaited because, uh, while I've covered all things Elden Ring for the whole first half of my channel's existence and I've sort of branched out into other games, I haven't really covered any of the, uh, original trilogy of Dark Souls or Bloodborne really, or Sekiro. But who better to start off my Souls coverage other than everybody's favorite sidekick and thief, Grey Rat. The borderline suicidally reckless Robin Hood style figure of Lothric and its surrounding areas. Uh, he hails from the Undead Settlement, a place that was seemingly a magnet for all things curse related, the biggest of which they sealed inside a spirit tree, which down the road would have some pretty unwanted consequences for the spirit tree, but the villagers of the Undead Settlement more or less weathered every storm that was thrown at them. I imagine growing up in this village you really only had like two choices, become a farmer, settler style guy, or become a bandit and steal what you need to survive. Grey Rat was indeed a thief, but he was cut from a different cloth than the others in his profession, people like Patches, or the numerous hollow thieves we've encountered across all three of these games. Mainly in that he did not steal for himself, but he stole for the good of his people of the undead settlement. I imagine he would share his, uh, plunder with his fellow villagers and would probably trade whatever they didn't need with traveling merchants for other things that they did need. Unsurprisingly, this made Grey Rat a uh, legendary figure in the eyes of the poor and a beloved folk hero to the people of his settlement. And I mean it makes sense, the guy wears a thrall hood, something designed to humiliate its wearer. You know, the undead thrall slaves of the settlement and the uh, cathedral of the deep. You guys, you can find those thralls everywhere, they even make it as far as the dreg heap. But the main purpose of those uh, hoods is to ridicule the wearer. Now this was mainly the case when imprisoned criminals were forced to wear it. But Grey Rat continues to wear his even after he gains his freedom, almost like a badge of honor to taunt those that place it on him. But I'm already getting ahead of myself, let's actually start with Grey Rat's origins. So as we already mentioned, he originated in the Undead Settlement. It's probably not always been the name of that village, but... By the events of Dark Souls 3, that's the only name there is for it. Now, back in his heyday, Grey Rat was a very famous and successful thief. He shared, he dared, and he was never scared. He was a real man of the people, a hero to the villagers of the Undead Settlement. So when the High Wall of Lothric suddenly appeared, probably due to the converging nature of the lands during the events of Dark Souls 3, he saw it as a challenge something for him to accomplish and he probably also viewed the high wall as probably having a lot of valuables and just stuff that he and his villagers might need. Grey Rat was built different, he had a drive like no other and his charitable friendly nature also extended to his colleagues. People like Unbreakable Patches, everybody's favorite cockroach, who Grey Rat would do a good turn for while in Lothric, which was something that Patches would never forget, I mean this is a guy who prides himself on capitalizing off of others greed and here's Grey Rat who's a thief just like him but is probably the least greedy person in all of Dark Souls. It's no surprise that Patches would never forget this and view it as a debt that he still needed to repay. Now sure Patches has his whole old pirate way of talking about it and, and tries to brush it off and act too cool for school on the surface but we know he did genuinely care about Grey Rat. Now I like to assume that after climbing the high wall that Grey Rat wasn't immediately caught and that maybe he made several return trips even treating the high wall like a grocery store for his village. And perhaps it was during those runs that he had his encounter with Patches and helped him out. But he was eventually captured and imprisoned by the Lothric garrison where they put a thrall hood on him and stuck him in a cell. And according to the man himself this was the only time he was ever caught while out thieving. Now I like to think it was because he had done the Lothric wall run so many times that he eventually got kind of lax and sloppy and was caught because you know after so long sneaking around the high wall of Lothric and robbing it for all its valuables had become rather easy for our dear friend Grey Rat. But honestly uh, who knows. Now we really don't know how long Grey Rat spent rotting away in this cell but it was presumably long enough for everything to fall apart back at his village. His imprisonment also made it impossible for him to return to the only person he ever really truly cared about, 
an old woman named Loretta, who also lived in the undead settlement, and was probably Grey Rat's mother figure. Like, I don't think she was his biological mom, but it's very likely that she was the person who raised him. Unfortunately for her and some of the other villagers, the evangelists of the deep would show up in search of more meat for the cause and begin converting the townsfolk to their uh, new religion. Loretta herself would presumably be killed either by hollowed out villagers or maybe on orders of the evangelists themselves as some sort of sacrifice. Or perhaps she was just too old and feeble for them to find any proper use for so they just, you know, quietly swept her into the trash can. It's tough to say, but Grey Rat does imply that she was quite old, so it's possible she maybe passed away due to natural causes, but she was stuffed in a bag still clutching her lucky bone and hung from one of the buildings of the settlement. Now, Grey Rat would spend an undisclosed amount of time rotting in a cell on the Lothric High Wall. His luck would finally change one day when a piece of unkindled ash wandered on in through the doors of his jail. Grey Rat would quickly cut a deal securing his freedom, promising to aid the mysterious wanderer in whichever way he could, on the condition that he deliver this ring to Loretta in the Undead Settlement. Judging by the ring itself and its effect, I would imagine Loretta gave this ring to Grey Rat in hopes that it would keep him safe across all of his reckless adventures. He probably asked the Unkindled to return the ring so that it would let Loretta know that he was safe, but that he couldn't return because he was serving this mysterious new wanderer. But after we, the Unkindled, agree to help him, he dips off to the Firelink Shrine and we go find Loretta. So while exploring the expansive undead settlement, the Unkindled eventually finds Loretta's corpse. And since this isn't Elden Ring, we don't possess the ability to place the ring on the corpse's finger. So instead, the Unkindled just takes her lucky bone and heads on back to Grey Rat. And understandably, he's pretty broken up by the news. He tells the Unkindled to keep the ring for good luck, and it did always grant him good luck when he had it. It kept him alive on the high wall. And then he falls into a deep, albeit quite brief, depression. And I mean, that's understandable. He's probably racked with guilt, thinking that Loretta's final hours were probably spent worrying about his safety, or that his relentless thievery habit kept him from being able to protect her from whatever harm may have befallen her. But through all this reflection, he finds a new purpose, and that was the debt of assistance that he owed to the Unkindled for setting him free. And sure, it was a pretty simple purpose, but it was one that allowed him to make use of his talents while also taking on new challenges and helping someone who had helped him out. And Grey Rat's biggest fear was, as he puts it, dying a petty rat. He wants to die doing something legendary, and he figures helping this unkindled out is the closest way of doing that that he could possibly find. And if he finds some elusive and possibly legendary places to loot in the process, so be it. Better he die doing that than die just lingering around in a forgotten Firelink Shrine. More or less a win-win for him. So the next time he sees the unkindled, he offers to loot the undead settlement for him. He figured everyone must be either dead or hollowed out by now, especially if Loretta was already gone. Plus, he was from the Undead Settlement, and any valuables they might have had was probably provided by him in the first place. I like to imagine that that Pontiff sword that he sells was something that he had stashed long ago, when he was still making runs to the High Wall. So this run went off without a hitch, and how could it not? I mean, it was his hometown, plus the village was comprised mostly of peasant-style hollows, so there was minimal danger. Yeah, there's the whole demon thing, but that's fairly easy to avoid. But this pillaging run must have been a real downer for him. I mean, seeing his home village in such a sorry state. I mean, he had to face the worn out, festering husk of a settlement that the village had become. And on top of that, he probably had to kill a fair amount of the uh, hollowed out residents, maybe even some people he formerly knew. But if a guy can face that, he can face anything, and he makes it back home safely to sell his wares to the Unkindled once again. And from then on, he's basically one of the most productive members of the Firelink Shrine community. All because of his unique set of skills, and he's still able to challenge and test those very same abilities while doing these runs. He's also by far the best merchant. I don't know about you guys, but I can't stand the Shrine Handmaiden. Just too condescending for me. Now, around this time, the Unkindled would also encounter another thief, everyone's favorite recurring character, Patches, and would be potentially swindled by the bald bandit up to two times. And the only person Patches speaks highly of is Grey Rat. He speaks to his skill as a thief and also mentions that he owes him a debt due to Grey Rat doing him a good turn on the high wall some time ago. And Patches, being Patches, is amazed that Grey Rat's still alive. Because as far as Patches thinks, being a selfless person like Grey Rat isn't going to get you far in a world like this, and he's not wrong. It is kind of amazing that Grey Rat's still alive at this point, but that's because someone helped him out. Now, I can't really speak for the intentions of fictional characters, but I always figured that 
the Enkindled's friendship with Grey Rat is what one patches over to their side. Because after the whole bridge thing in the cathedral, he doesn't try any more scheming with you. Anyway though, now when the Unkindled eventually discovers the lost city of Irithil of the Boreal Valley, Grey Rat catches wind and once again offers his pillaging services to the Unkindled, claiming that the city was sure to have untold riches and that a rat like him could sneak past its various defenses and dangers with little to no effort. He does acknowledge that the city is going to be pretty dangerous, but he doesn't really worry too much. That could be because he's looking to die while thieving. That's probably the best death that he could get. He wants that death actively. But I imagine part of him just wants to see this lost city and rob it, of course. As far as he's concerned, this city of moon-worshipping nobles has to be rife with pickings. A more worthy place to loot you probably couldn't find. Now when Patches hears about Grey Rat's little trip to Irithyll, he's understandably quite concerned. He masters, of course, by saying he wants to go through Grey Rat's stash if he did finally die, but we know the concern's real. But Patches, being Patches, also sees the unique opportunity this presents. See, he recently just came up on a full set of Katarina Onion Knight armor that could perfectly disguise him if he were to hypothetically go on a rescue mission just to make sure Grey Rat made it home okay. This would effectively preserve his reputation of being a bastard while also allowing him to repay his debt to Grey Rat, a guy he actually respected and probably the only person that he considered a friend. And yeah, Patches was many things, but he wasn't a coward, and he's a pretty capable fighter, especially in a full set of onion plate. So he heads off to Irithyll to make sure Grey Rat's pillaging run goes off without a hitch, and winds up saving him from a bunch of sewer centipedes that I believe to be related to the uh, trees from the Ariandel painting, but that's a story for another day. But he saves Grey Rat from a bunch of those things while pretending to be a noble knight of Katarina, doing his best impression of Sigurd and saying, hmm, a lot. And once he makes it safely back to the Firelink Shrine, Grey Rat even mentions to the Unkindled that he was saved by a nameless Katarina Onion Knight while on his run out in Irithyll and that he surely would have died without his assistance. No, I know Sigurd can also save Grey Rat in this situation, but the story works a lot better with it being Patches. A lot more meaningful, if you ask me. And I like the nuance of Patches not letting Grey Rat know it was him and Grey Rat just thinking it was a knight. You know, there's a, it's a cool story that way. Anyway though, Grey Rat brought back a pretty nice bounty of items from Irithyll. Curiously enough, mostly Lothric themed items. I think there was some kind of developer mix up in regards to what inventories he got from what run because he gives us the Pontiff Sword from the Undead Settlement run and all these Lothric items from the Irithyll run. Seems like a, a mishap, but uh, no real point focusing on that too much. But he did indeed get a lot of cool items from his run to Irithyll. Now once the Unkindled gained access to Lothric Palace proper, Grey Rat couldn't help but offer his services yet again to this time loot the castle of the very high wall that had imprisoned him for presumably years. It was probably sort of a symbolic thing to him because you know all those years ago he saw the high wall suddenly appear and many people saw probably a threat and were scared he saw a challenge. He was the first guy to ever climb the high wall and he was probably also the first thief to ever return from it safely. He knew the wall like the back of his hand, but he had never really attempted to loot the castle. And Lothric Castle Man is something else. This place also contained the Grand Archives, which were full of various dangers, attacking bookshelves, thralls with superheated weapons. Oh yeah, and a crystal sage with a beak. Just a whole lot of various different dangerous things. But this was a truly legendary run, and we know that that's all that Grey Rat wanted was to not die a petty rat, as he says. He wanted to die doing something cool, and in this case, it might help out his good friend, the Unkindled, then so be it. You know, two birds with one stone type of deal. But the Unkindled agrees and allows Grey Rat to go on this pillaging run, but he's gone noticeably longer than usual. And even Patches himself doesn't seem too hopeful of Grey Rat's survival, claiming that the old thief must have had a death wish or something. No one returns from Lothric Castle alive, as Patches puts it. And sure enough, while exploring the rooftops of the Grand Archives, the Unkindled happened to cross Grey Rat's corpse. It's tough to say for certain, but he was presumably killed by one of the various gargoyles that patrolled the roof. There were a lot of them in his vicinity, and uh, all he was packing was that little bandit knife. It's no wonder he didn't stand a chance. Now, we know that the average Dark Souls NPC abruptly dies at the end of their questline, usually because they finally fulfilled their purpose. They're allowed to move on, so to speak. Or in Anri's case, they just go hollow and you have to kill them. But people like Sigurd, Egon, oh, and Cirrus, 
They all just sort of die when they no longer have a purpose. Grey Rat's different in that he kept up in the ante. His purpose was to die doing something legendary and he kept surviving. One could argue that he was supposed to die on his run in Irithyll, which, probably true, he only survived because he was saved by Patches, and that having him rescued there only prolonged the inevitable because he would have just continued to seek more and more challenges until he died on one of them. But what says his apart from all the other NPC quest lines is that his death doesn't feel abrupt. It feels like a natural conclusion to a quest line. And there's other ones like this, but uh, this one was my favorite, always. Now, if you return to Patches, he's understandably quite broken up by the news of uh, Grey Rat's passing. Although he isn't too surprised given the uh, death trap that Lothric Castle is. And he had long been thinking Grey Rat was losing it, saying he must have lost it if he thought he had a chance surviving at Lothric Castle, which is something he also said about his run in Irithyll too, so I imagine Patches kind of understood why uh, Grey Rat was going on these runs in the end. He knew the guy had a death wish. But it still saddened him and it inspired him. He goes to Lothric to finish Grey Rat's thieving run for him, honoring the old thief's memory in a way that he knows he would appreciate, while also making a nice profit for himself after selling that hidden blessing to the unkindled for an exorbitant amount of uh, souls. And after that point, Patches is like fully the unkindled's friend. He's like, you know, we're just a couple of outcasts, you and I, we're buddies. In a way, Grey Rat sort of inspired Patches to take his place after he was gone as the Unkindled's thieving sidekick, even if he does charge way more. I think Patches makes up for it all in full in the uh, Ring City DLC. A lot of what he does in that reminds me of a combination of Sigurd and Grey Rat. That's what makes his time as lap so cool, but that's something I can talk about in another video. Grey Rat was one of those once in an era type of guys. I mean, he was able to inspire someone as jaded as Patches, a guy who literally goes out of his way to trick people into becoming victims of their own greed. Literally, a guy who's beyond cynical at the world. And Grey Rat was able to change his outlook, however slightly. But enough to the point where Patches actively wants to repay his debt towards Grey Rat and will attack anybody who messes with the old thief. I mean, try it out. Attack Grey Rat and watch Patches go hostile. But at the very least, Grey Rat's character allows Patches' character to be viewed in a different light. Turns out he is a loyal friend as well to those he deems worthy of it, but he'll never let anybody know that. He's got his reputation to preserve, you see. But yeah, man, Grey Rat had a hell of a journey. He was a petty thief from the slums, or as I like to call him, the gutter, and he became a folk hero and inspiration to thieves and bastards all across the world, even the ones of the most cynical variety, like Patches. And at the end of the day, he was a solid ally and friend to the main character of Dark Souls 3, and that's really all I can ask for from uh, my NPCs. But yeah, I think that's really all I had to say about the great thief, Grey Rat, of the Undead Settlement. A loyal friend and an extremely useful ally. One of my favorite characters out of the entire series. This guy rocks, in my humble opinion. I relate a lot more to Patches, but I strive to be more like Grey Rat. But yeah, as always, I hope you guys found the video at least a little bit entertaining or informative. I know most people already know all there is to know about uh, Dark Souls lore, but that doesn't make it any less fun to talk about or interpret. As always, though, if you liked the video, please like it. If you disliked it, please dislike it. And if you like hearing me ramble on about various different lore topics coming from video games and uh, randomly some movie reviews or TV reviews, stuff like that, please consider subscribing. A lot of good stuff coming now that I'm getting all this Dark Souls footage and whatnot. But yeah, at the risk of uh, rambling anymore, let's have our outro and then a couple final thoughts. But yeah, I've always thought Grey Rat was a really cool character, and I really liked how his quest line sort of highlighted this different side of Patches that we've never seen before. This guy who actually is willing to pay his debts only to those he respects. Plus, we don't really get a lot of cool thief characters in Dark Souls. I mean, all we've really had is Patches. And I always thought Grey Rat's character was just a great showing of what the thief archetype could be. His implied backstory and background is tragic. I mean, his hometown is forcibly being converted into human sacrifices for a uh, church devoted to a gluttonous blob, but he's still a good-natured and extremely helpful guy and uh, a great friend to the character, in my opinion. Plus, he always reminded me of one of my favorite characters from cinema, Subutai from Conan the Barbarian, the thief that Arnold sets free and becomes his ally for the rest of the movie. Great film, by the way. I always recommend that to anybody who hasn't seen it. The first Conan the Barbarian movie. 
But yeah, look at me over here rambling. Uh, I will let you guys all go. There will be something good coming soon. Possibly another Dark Souls one. Or maybe it'll be another Elder Scrolls one. I'm not really sure which order uh, stuff's going to come out. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. As always, I hope you guys be safe. And I will see you next time.